Hello and welcome to the program. Women will hold about 20% of the seats in the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine of the ninth convocation, which is a significant step towards gender, gender equality. Most women are members of the Servant of the People and Voice parties. The European Solidarity is in third place. Now the opposition platform for life features the smallest number of female members. In total, there will be 87 women working parliament. To discuss this, we're joined in the studio today by Alexandra Golub. She's a head of the Women's Rights Protection League, Army of equal NGO. Hello and thank you for joining Hello. us. So, so first question, um, as of today every fifth MP of the ninth conversation is a is a woman. Now it's, it's, it's a record for independent Ukraine. How do you explain this achievement? Um, I think it's a result of a great work of uh, this uh, previous convocation of parliament of all NGOs who fight for this uh, gender equality issue. And we also, together with uh, our partners from another NGOs, ask uh, all parties who try to run the parliament seats uh, to um, take more women in the party list. And I think it's a really great result for Ukraine and also for Ukrainian parliament. Um, now, what would you say? Which, which you say you talked about the the NGO and the, and the work of NGOs to work towards this this uh, achievement? But what other factors contributed to make such a su such a presence of women in the parliament? Uh, I think that uh, Ukrainian uh, people want to see more new politicians and women. Uh, maybe these new faces in Ukrainian uh, political process, and uh, it's a uh, really. Um, great thing that uh, in this new Verkhovna Rada, 26 women uh, has have been elected in single mandate districts because mm -hmm. now it's only four MPs. And it's a really great result because uh, people believe in this w women, female, who will run the office, maybe some position even in uh, parliamentary committees. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> now, how do do key political for we we we, we talked about uh, the difference of, of number of uh, women in the servant of people and and Holos party but uh, in general how did key political for, uh, forces adhere to gender equalities and the uh, gender equality issues earlier yeah so now we see some positive dynamics uh, in reducing the gap between women and men in uh, elected position but ukraine is still far from some uh, like uh, re european standards and for example according to idea uh, women in poland are represented uh, in the parliament at 29 uh, percent and mm -hmm. when we talk about some scandinavian countries uh, this figure is more than 40 percent so um, we also try to promote uh, mandatory gender quotas in party list and as you know recently Verkhovna Rada adopted a new electoral code and uh, in this uh, law um, in addition to open list uh, provides mandatory 40 percent gender quota and uh, the for the first time, uh, there is a clear su sanction uh, for parties uh, that don't want uh, uh, to um, to apply the to code apply. House, yeah, it? and uh, central election election commission must refuse this mm -hmm. party list, and it's also a great step uh, to ensuring the real gender equality in future parliamentary election. Now, the, so uh, my understanding is through that electoral code, sorry, um, ba basically party who don't respect that would be punished. Is it a yeah. fine? Is it a penalty? How, how, how does it, how does uh, it so work? So, um, I mean that uh, the Central Election Commission just refused to register all so they just party list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, obligation uh, to get this 40% uh, quotas. Now. <clears throat> Even if uh, this this uh, one of the other issue with gender equality, generally at least in Western countries, it's not necessarily the the, the presence of um, women worker or women in politics in general, but also also the pay uh, and 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 the salaries. Yeah. Is there a, is there a guarantee that you know women will be have equal pay? Because it seems to be an, an issue in every every country about gender equality here. So when we talk about. Uh 
like new phase of our parliament uh, about some female lobby. Uh, we also talk about some issue and one of them is uh, to deal something with this pay gap mm -hmm. because now in Ukraine it's 27 percent and it's like great figure and uh, we need to I think also talk about some reform of uh, child care system when men need to be more involved in this process because mm -hmm. it's also um, it, it influence really uh, for the salary and for money that women can get in their job. Mm -hmm. So I think we also need to talk about this. Now, uh, would you say there is still uh, this, this idea, this perception that women in, in the Ukraine society can't do, still can't do certain jobs that men can do? We still, that still exist and how to tackle that, I mean, at least in the political level? Uh, I think we need to fight these gender stereotypes because uh, there is no profession that is only for men or for mm. women. And uh, also we need to change maybe some issue in our educational system because our um, this system is uh, sometimes provides these gender stereotypes during some books and some other materials. And I know that our uh, government try to improve the situation uh, but also i think we need uh, to strengthen responsibility for the med for media and advertisers for some discriminatory content because uh, now we have uh, a lot um, a lot of different i i may say bad ads and mm. other materials and media that uh, represent women as uh, only mother or objectify or yeah. just just only yeah yeah so we need to fight this fight this stereotype in media and in education area mm -hmm. now would you say that <clears throat> well, what's interesting is uh as we said earlier is that the two parties with the most representation are the new parties of um, seven of the people and and horse um would you say that the fact that this <clears throat> Mr. Zelensky and, and uh, Mr. Vakarchuk are both mediatic figures. Will it help or uh, uh, how does it influence their push for gender equality? I know that all uh, feminists uh, and all NGO sector pay attention to every step of uh, these uh, politicians and it will promote uh, like public control mm -hmm. also in area of gender equality and I think that we also need to ask about for example ratification of Istanbul Convention it's Which uh, is uh, yeah, for combating of gender uh, based in domestic violence mm -hmm. and uh, I think it uh, it's um, our obligation to promote this issue and ask from our new politician how they will try to get these things. So, <clears throat> your um, uh, the, the, the NGO Harmony uh, Vehicle, how, so how does it work? Do you do you prepare some text and some potential potential draft of law that you will give to deputies that then will be submitted? How does it how does the process work in general? Yeah, uh, of course we try. Uh, to make some uh, draft laws and uh, also we promote some uh, advocacy campaign, for example, against sexist uh, advertising. Uh, we call it Ukraine without sexism. And we also uh, fight uh, against this uh, um, like men profession list mm -hmm. uh, to cancel this list. And also we try to communicate our opinion with uh, MPs uh, and uh, to, to provide them some um, understanding of this issue because it's really a difficult problem. Human rights and gender equality, it's not something like uh, very clear for everyone. And mm -hmm. when we talk about new MPs, they, I think they will need our help in this area. So you'd say they're more receptive than the, than, than the next, than, than the previous, sorry, convocation of the Rada here. Yeah, but also even in this act in Verkhovna Rada, we also have a lot, um, a lot of friends who stand for human rights, who mm -hmm. uh, promote rights of, um, for example, women from vulnerable groups. It's also very difficult issues that uh, sometimes uh, doesn't bring some um, very, uh, how can I say, media result mm -hmm. for this MP, but uh, there are some MPs and the women, female MPs, who try to promote and stand for this issue. Now, <clears throat> um, we talked about uh, the, 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 the electoral code, but what more can be, can, be, can be done to, let's say, have 
at the very least 50 percent like all in all you know and we think it's realistic even in ukraine to have one day uh complete 50 percent or just pure gender equality into, into, uh, yeah. at least in the <laughs> i think i think it uh is it could be, yeah, and uh, of course this gender issue will affect uh, the parliament uh, because um, we will asking uh, we will ask about inclusion this gender component in the work of parliament. For example, I'm talking about uh, gender expertise of draft law uh, because sometimes some texts uh, are really discriminatory, and we need to um, to check. Mm -hmm. the draft law on this issue and also for example we are talking about uh, formation of delegation of, in, and taking into account this gender-based issue because mm -hmm. now some com committees and uh, some delegation um, doesn't uh, have any representation of female MPs at all and because it's it's like issues directly concerning women you're, you're saying that there should be like women delegation here no, I think it could be like balanced mm -hmm. representation because now all, uh, mostly all financial issue, it's like a uh, man issue in our parliament. And I hope that this situation will change in new mm -hmm. convocation. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, so we, we talked about your work and the, the way you work, but all in all, what for, for you why, and, and, uh, as a priority, what bill should first be adopted right now to promote gender equality? Do you have an, an example of a, a draft bill that could oh, be submitted? For example, I, talk, I already talked mm -hmm. about ratification of Istanbul Convention and also its introducing of a gender quota in a supervisory boards of the state enterprises. It also will promote reducing of this, of this uh, gender pay gap and uh, also i think uh, that our parliament uh, need to ensure the equal access for both sexes uh, to the military education because now um, everyone knows that there is war in ukraine mm -hmm. so we need to to promote this right of women and men uh, to the free access to any military education in ukraine also do, is, there, is there any other policy? We talked a little bit about edu education. It's also, as you said, uh, about breaking stereotypes. If we talk about military, for example, a lot of people will say, well, you know, army is not, is not for women, which is not, not true. Uh, how, is, there, is there any other, other initiative to break the, 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 these educational stereotypes? I know that uh, a lot of uh, teachers and a lot of um, scientists who work at uh, in universities try to create this gender sensitive approach for the students and try to explain uh, how it how we can live without these gender stereotypes and i think maybe we need more um, more support from our government in mm. this area uh, and also um, i think we need um, to empower women, not only punish uh, some uh, like bad politician or some bad companies, we need to empower women, uh, try to be more involved in political and uh, other process mm -hmm. in our country. So the idea would be to have a double process, which is sanctioning, yeah. as you said, uh, and fining and doing penalty for bad politician, and also having this, this empowering of, yeah. of, of women. Um, now, and to, to, to conclude this interview, in general, like in the general tendency, how does this uh, gender equality uh, tendency works and looks like and, and which kind of experience or which country could potentially be applicable to Ukraine? Uh, I think the uh, best uh, example for Ukraine is the example of Scandinavian countries because uh, these country, countries are leaders in this area and also when we talk about some um, um, child care system or mm -hmm. education system or system free from these gender stereotypes. We are talking mostly about the Scandinavian countries. So I hope that our uh, newly elected politician will uh, study this experience and try to implement it in uh, Ukraine. Well, we then will uh, surely, uh, close, uh, clo clo surely follow uh, close, uh, sorry, the, the result uh, of this, um, of this uh, law. Thank you very much for coming Thank in you. our studio today. Uh, that was Alexander Golub, head of the Women's Rights Protection League, Harmony, we call NGO. Thank you for watching the program and stay tuned for the rest.